All right, so now we're moving on to complex numbers and trig form of complex numbers. This is actually going to be very similar to vectors. Uh, that's why it's in the same unit. Um, but the, tr the trick is you don't want to get the two confused. Uh, there's a lot of overlap in the notations and how to find things, but they mean different things when we're talking about vectors versus a complex number. So today we're going to look at graphing complex numbers, writing complex numbers in trig form, and performing operations when the complex number is written in trig form. Okay, so first the complex plane. Uh, if we have some complex number z, uh, and it equals a plus bi, we can represent this on what we call our complex plane as a point a and then b, where a is what we normally think of as our x value, but in this case a represents the value of the real number, and b is what we normally think of as our y value, but in this case b represents uh, the um, imaginary component. And so we can plot this point A plus BI by going A units to the right and B units up. So that's how we can graph things on a complex plane, or graph a complex number uh, on our coordinate plane. So I want you to pause the video for a minute and graph 3 plus 4i, negative 1 minus 2i, negative 3, and negative 4i. So these are what you want to graph. Pause the video, unpause when you're ready to check your work. Okay, so A is 3 to the right and 4 up, so that's point A. Uh, B is negative 1, so 1 to the left and 2 down, so this is B. C is 3 to the left, and D is 4 down. Hopefully that's pretty straightforward. Okay, moving on. What is the absolute value of a complex number? The absolute value of a complex number, written as the absolute value of z, which is the absolute value of a plus bi, is the square root of a squared plus b squared. So think about what does this represent graphically? Well, that's our distance formula. So when you're finding the absolute value of a complex number, you're actually finding the distance that that complex number is from the origin on the complex plane. It's also, think about this, the magnitude of a vector. So we should hopefully at this point see that there's a lot of overlap already between how a vector is written and how a complex number is written. Normally a vector, you know, we'd have vector v equals um, some a i plus b e j. Well now for a complex number we have some complex number z is a plus b i. So we want to make sure we do not confuse the i in a complex number and the i in a vector. They are very different things. Okay, so I want you to pause the video, determine the absolute value of z equals 2 minus 4i. Unpause when you're ready to check your work. This should be an exact answer. Okay, so we should end up with 2 root 5. Alright, now moving on to the trig form of a complex number. So a complex number a plus bi can be written in trig form uh, where it's r times the quantity cosine theta plus i sine theta, where r is the absolute value of the complex number, so the square root of a squared plus b squared, a is r cosine theta, and b is r sine theta. This again is the exact same thing as the trig form of a vector. Uh, but now we're doing it with a complex number. Um, the value r is called a modulus. That's not terribly important. Uh, I'm showing you that more just for mathematical correctness. Uh, the angle theta, which we know tangent of theta is b over a, is called the argument, where theta is between 0 and 2 pi. There's also a shorthand form of this. Uh, where we can write z equals r cis of theta, where cis theta represents cosine theta plus i sine theta. 
Uh, so this is a shorthand for the trig form R cosine of theta plus I sine theta. Okay, so I want you to plot Z equals negative 2 minus 2I in the complex plane, and then I want you to write Z in trig form. So pause the video, unpause when you're ready to check your work. Okay, so to plot it, uh, I went 2 left and 2 down, so there's my point Z. So now to write this in trig form, first I need to find R. R is the square root of negative 2 squared plus negative 2 squared, so that's going to be 2 root 2. So now to write this in trig form, I have four different but correct answers here. So I can write Z equals 2 root 2 times the cosine of 225 degrees plus I sine of 225 degrees. So we do need to be aware of what was my angle. And so this is the angle that we're referring to when we're using trig form. Uh, I could also write 2 root 2 CIS of 225 degrees. Uh, for now, you should be comfortable writing out the long hand, and you should know the short hand. Um, so I want to make sure you understand both of them. Uh, and then we could also use radians as well. So that's what I did down here too. Uh, so I did not specify degrees or radians. Again, you're going to want to be comfortable with both, which you should be. Um, because on a test or a quiz, I will specify one or the other, and I will go back and forth between which ones I specify. So in radians, this would be 2 root 2 times the quantity cosine of 5 pi fourths plus i sine of 5 pi fourths, or 2 root 2 cis of 5 pi fourths. And then you should be able to see now, if I have this in trig form, if I was to multiply out or distribute the 2 root 2, so what is the cosine of 5 pi fourths? It's negative root 2 over 2 and the sine of 5 pi fourths is negative root 2 over 2. So if you distribute r, it's going to lead you right back to the standard form of the complex number. You'll get negative 2 minus negative 2, or minus 2 r. Okay, so now let's look at, well, what about if we have two complex numbers in trig form, how do we find the product of the two? So this is one area where trig form is actually a little bit nicer sometimes than standard form because doing operations in trig form is pretty easy. So the product, z1 times z2, is going to be the product of uh, the r values. So r1 times r2 times the cosine of theta1 plus theta2 plus i sine of theta1 plus theta 2. Or if we use shorthand, we would have R1 times R2 times CIS theta 1 plus theta 2. Okay, so using that I want you to find the product of the complex numbers, leave the answer in trig form. Also leave it in degrees since you're given the problem in degrees. Pause the video, find the product, unpause when you are ready to check your work. Okay, hopefully this did not take you very long. 4 times 7 is 28, 50 plus 100 is 150. And then we just rewrite it like that. That's it. Well, what about the quotient or the difference? I'm sorry, or the division of complex numbers in trig form? Again, pretty straightforward or pretty simple. So if I have z1 is r1 cosine theta1 plus i sine theta1, and z2 is r2 times cosine theta2 plus i sine theta2, those are two complex numbers. Then their quotient z1 over z2 is going to be r1 over r2 times the cosine of theta1 minus theta2 plus i sine theta1 minus theta2. So in this case, we divide the moduli and subtract the arguments. Again, I want you to pause the video, find the quotient of the complex numbers now, leave the answer in trig form, unpause when you're ready to check the work. So z2 over z1 is 8 divided by 4, which is 2 times the CIS, or cosine 
of 100 minus 40, which is 60, plus I sine of 100 minus 40, so 60. So our answer is 2CIS 60. Okay, so we need to understand the complex plane and how to graph uh, complex numbers in standard form in the complex plane. Also, how to graph them if they were in trig form in the complex plane. Be able to convert back and forth between standard form and trig form of a complex number and be able to form, perform operations in either form. So you've been performing operations in standard form before. We did that in first semester. Um, so now we're looking at how we can do that in trig form as well.